Good morning, it's Gabby again back with the Career Conversation Cafe Corner. We're gonna be joined pretty soon, so as we're waiting, go ahead and make sure you grab your mug for today, your BYOM. And we're going to be quickly waiting for Ms. Betsy Castro, our guest today. So enjoy some of the jazz music, take a sip, sit back and relax. Hello, Sebastian, welcome, welcome. Hello, welcome, thank you for joining us. We're gonna do some tips today about interviews. So if you wanna stay posted, stay on, please feel free to ask any questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce, hi Sebastian. Um, again, my name is Gabby, and this is a Career Conversation Cafe. This is our fourth video, so we're excited going live with you guys again. Um, again, a shout out to Miss Katia who helped us last week. She was uh, speaking with us all things resumes and some tips and tricks. If you want to watch that video, it is on our website. Um, forgive me, on our page. You can go ahead and click and watch that video. It's a quick, brief little video. Hello, Mini Fogel. Oh, that's Peter. Shout out to Peter as well, who joined us a couple weeks back, talked about job mine. So today, I just want to give some, again, save the dates. We have several coming up in September, and we want to make sure you have your calendar out. So September 2nd is work at UTEP. So if you're interested in working at UTEP, please feel free to put that down. We're gonna have employers um, from UTEP looking for students to hire. So make sure September 2nd, that's the first one coming up. We have Ms. Betsy Castro joining us today. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about interviews. She is the director of the Career Center. She'll introduce herself shortly. And she's the one that's on the other end of the table when you're sitting in an interview. So she's gonna offer some good insight for you guys. So if you want to stay tuned on some goods and bads that we can listen to and maybe even laugh a little bit because you've experienced those as well, feel free. So as we wait for her to join, Miss Betsy, make sure that you know, go ahead and request again. Oops, sorry for, for shaking. Uh, so another save the day besides September 2nd is September 4th to the 11th. We have a virtual open house. It's our first one. It's going to be through social media as well. And every day we're going to be showing videos that gives you clues to put together and mine a code. So you're gonna be putting a code together to win potentially one out of three prizes. So it's gonna be the 4th to the 11th, if you have your calendar open. And then we have a huge event also in September at the end called the Career Expo. It is gonna be virtual this year. We're gonna have organizations and companies from around the nation and around the city looking for students to hire. If you're not ready to work just yet, but you wanna make sure you get those connections, hop on with us at the Virtual Expo and network with some of those companies, especially ones that you're interested in. Let me go ahead and add her in. Uh, so if you're not looking to get a job just yet, by going to this expo, you can start making those connections with companies. So when you're ready to do an internship or find a job, they're there. And this is Miss Betsy. Hello, good morning. Hi, Gabby, how are you? Thanks for inviting me. Cheers. Got my coffee ready. Cheers, cheers, cheers. clink. All right, thank you for coming and being a part of it. So go ahead and introduce yourself and, and who you are. Great, well, my name is Betsy Castro and I'm the director of the Career Center. I've been very fortunate to be part of this awesome department for a number of years and thanks for having me here today. Yes, she's the best, best boss. So that's what I'm saying is Betsy is on the other side of the table when you're in an interview and you're over there shaking, she's the one watching and getting some tips. So she's gonna offer some pros and cons and good and bad experiences that she has had on the other side. So let's go ahead and start, Miss Betsy. What are some of the bad interviews you've experienced that you're like, oh, avoid doing this completely? So I'll share two. One of them is virtual and one of them is when you have a real interview. So on the virtual side is when we actually call somebody. Uh, we call someone and um, they're not ready to interview. They will literally get on the screen with their t-shirt on and they said, uh, I'm sorry, but was I scheduled to meet with you today? And it's kind of like, yes, remember we emailed, we even called you on your cell phone to confirm it. And so people are not dressed appropriately. And so always make sure that you're ready to speak to the folks who are ready to, to meet you. And then the other one has been more on a live setting, I guess we would say, where the candidate was wearing so much cologne that the recruiter passed away. I mean, passed off, passed out rather, not passed, passed away, out. passed out and uh, fell on the ground. So we had to call campus police uh, because we were worried about his well-being. And it turned out that he just was allergic to this particular cologne and 
he just went down, but he was fine. Fortunately, he was fine. Okay, okay. So definitely avoid wearing too much perfume or cologne or very little. So just the, the little dabs. Oh, that's scary. Um, so yeah. passed out. All right. So those are two bads, virtual. And be ready, guys. Put it in your calendar that you're ready to go. Put a phone reminder two hours before the day before so you're ready to go. Okay. What are some good things you've experienced in an interview? What's somebody that stood out? What are some things you noticed? So definitely the confidence needs to be there and also the research on the organization. So remember, you have already passed that first hurdle. People looked at your resume and they thought, wow, this person is a really good candidate. Let's bring them in. And so remember that. So walk in there with confidence, knowing that definitely you've already met some of the requirements and research the organization and know what you're talking about. So I've, yeah, again, sometimes it's kind of hard to stay away from the negative, but people walk, walk in and say, I'm here to apply for this, you know, the coordinator position. And you're looking at them and saying, well, this is a different position. So making sure that when people walk in and they're like, I know exactly what, I'm what the position entails. I read the job description. Um, people come prepared with their presentation, whether it be online or they'll bring in sample work. Those are things that really stand out. And you're wanting to say, gosh, I wish I could just hire that person and not have to go through the entire applicant pool, right? Right. Okay. So just knowing, knowing what the job is, what the job description is, uh, printing it out. I know I had an experience where I applied and then the job description just disappeared and I panicked because I didn't know, you know, I, I didn't print it out in enough time. So before the job closes, guys, print out that job description or save it as a PDF so you can go back when they ask for an interview and really look at what they're looking for. Because that was a right. mistake I had and it was, oh, it was so stressful because I was like, I don't remember what they're asking for. So, right. And remember, the questions that we're going to ask you are going to be based on that answer sheet. So your job description is kind of your answer sheet. So make sure you're ready to talk in detail and share really good examples of some of the work that you've done, even if it's uh, limited to the classroom, like working on a project, or maybe you're involved in your church. Uh, make sure you mention all of those because we've never met you. And so this is a great opportunity for you to share more details as to why you, you can do the job and you're ready to do it. All right, fantastic. So those are some pros and cons that are just personal experiences of Ms. Betsy's experience. We have several questions that some of you may have and hopefully we can answer. If you have any questions, you can write them in the chat and we'll answer today live. So one of the first ones we had was how do you, how do you not make things awkward when the interview first starts? Well, simple thing, and I know El Pasoans and UTEP are known for their warm hospitality. So as things come up, just say, good morning, how is everybody doing? Um, allow me to introduce myself and just kind of get that going. But even just good morning, smiling, not standing there going like, oh, my God, I'm not ready for this. Um, definitely, if folks don't introduce themselves, maybe ask, say, for my um, reference, do you mind if I just ask? Uh, who's on the call, and then jot down those names. Remember, um, when they ask you a question, especially virtually, it's really odd or diff difficult to make a personal connection. So it's always good to say, oh, Ms. Gabby, to answer your question, and then you've used their name in the response. So that's always a good tip for you to have. Okay, so jotting down their names. Ooh, that's a, that's a very good yeah. one. Um, and from me, my personal experience, and I've been through a lot of interviews, smiling and being one of the first ones to acknowledge that we're all human everybody gets stressed out so just um knowing that before you go in say okay we're all human you know just smile and say hi and break the ice and it'll calm yourself down so yeah just, just that helps um what's the best question you have been asked that's actually one of the questions in our chat by Ms. Tina ortiz what's a good question to ask at the end of the interview so definitely asking that i've been stunned when people say and or i've been happily surprised when people say what do you expect from me in six months what do you expect from me from a year out from from today um, because that tells me wow this person is really thinking out there and is and is already already thinking about how am i going to be you know evaluated in terms of my work so i think that's really good you know what are some of the expectations you know 30 days out six months out year out I think that's a really good question to ask um, when you're in an interview. 
And you'll be, you'll be getting an insight as to what people expect you to do in those 30, 60, you know, plus days ahead. And that's good because it gives you kind of like a checklist. So you, you remember from the interview, you say, I remember in the interview, you wanted me to get this done. I have it done. You know how amazing that'll make you look? That's great. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have, what can I do to stand out on a virtual interview? Because of all this, um, what's going on, how can I stand out virtually? So a couple of very simple things would be just let's first take care of what, how we look, right? So I think still look, dressing up and looking good is important. Today, it's more of a casual sweating that we're here, but I have my jacket ready in case I have to meet with someone that really wants me to, to jump on and, and be professional. So look great. Um, keep an eye on your background. You know, I think oftentimes, you know, we're having to interview in our bedrooms and it's kind of weird, but hey, make your bed, um, pick up your room, minimize your, the exposure that we're going to be showing. Um, I was recently, recently on a call um, with, it's, I'm not going to say, but it was a professor and their bed was undone. There was cats everywhere. You know, I'm a cat person, but I put my cat outside when I have to be talking to people in this kind of setting. So make your bed, clean up, make sure it looks professional because that's a reflection of who you, who you are. Um, and then just have a positive attitude. Again, do your research, all those things that we talked about earlier. All right. And just uh, if you have kids, remember um, to let them know, like, just leave me alone for an hour. I had my I had a friend who put a chair in front of her door that says on an interview, do not come in. I don't do it. And so just letting your family know as well, because unfortunately, a lot of us are with our family, not unfortunately, but fortunately, actually, we're with our family. But it's hard to do these interviews with all the noise. So just letting everybody know as well. So that's a good one. Um, what if I only have a bedroom to interview in? So you had mentioned that to clean it up, make it look nice. Yeah, little things like that. And like you mentioned earlier, um, some of us, you know, our grandparents are here and sometimes they'll walk in and say, Mija, get a cafecito, you know, hey, sweetie, do you want a coffee? And just letting, letting them know, hey, grandma, or hey, brother, or hey, whoever, uh, I'm going to be on this call. So just give me some, some time, some quiet time. Okay, perfect. So the bedroom, that's, some, that's where we're at now, so the bedroom. Um, what do I do with my, okay, this may be for ladies more so, what do I do with my hair on the day of? So again, remember, just everything you, remember you're not going to a club or this is not like a social hangout. So just professional, I mean, make sure your hair is, you don't have to tie it back because sometimes people think like, oh, they're tying it back in a ponytail. That means they probably just woke up. But do your hair, do your makeup. Pay attention to your nails, things that people may still watch. Um, and so do all the things that you were doing pre-COVID so that you still look professional and sharp. Oh, that's a great tip. I didn't even think about the nails. I do. You go, yeah, go get your nails. Don't even get them done, but make sure they're clean. Um, you want to make the best first impression ever at this interview. So that's great. Uh, a tip for me is I have, you know, long hair and I tend to get in my face. So I always clip my hair back to avoid doing that all the time during an interview. So that's something if you have bangs or, you know, clip it back. All right. I have a couple more questions that came on our chat. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Is it better to call or email your interview for a follow-up? So after the interview. So definitely afterwards, um, a lot of us are getting a lot of email, but I think it's still important that you send them a thank you note and that you emphasize at least one point of why you're the great, the best candidate for the organization. So I know for the most part we say hand, you know, hand write a note, but it's taking too long to get those things out. So just send them a quick email, say thank you so much. I really appreciate meeting with you. Very much interested in that position. Again, one other reason why I think I would be a great candidate. I think those are important things to mention. Oh, write those down, guys. This is from the actual person, so make sure you listen to those. Uh, we actually yeah. have a thank you uh, example template to work off of on our sample document page online utep.edu slash careers, click on students, sample documents, and you'll see all of our free resources. And one of them is the thank you notes to give you kind of a template to go off of. Again, adjust it to who you are, though, who you interviewed for. And like Miss Betsy said in the beginning, um, Betsy said to uh, take their name down, their names, so you can personalize it for those people. Definitely. All right. Is it bad to look at the screen instead of the camera during a, a virtual interview? So one of the things I've done, so I'm using my phone now, but typically on my, on my computer, on my laptop, I have a little X 
to where I've tested it with stat with my friends and I say, okay, if I look where, you know, where in here, does it look like I'm actually looking at you? And I've actually just put a little X on the actual screen with a dry erase marker. And it's good to make eye contact uh, with the folks, make sure that you smile. You don't have to stare at the darn thing the whole time, but definitely looking at it, smiling, looking away, natural. Um, again, recently I was on a, on another call and the person was like this the whole time. So I all I saw was their feelings in their mouth because they were looking up the camera and it, they did not realize that just their mouth was showing. So practice ahead of time, you know, call your friend, call your mom, call your sister, call your best friend and say, hey, how do I look? How's my setting? Do I need to get rid of something? Um, how does this item of clothing look? Is it too bright? Is it not bright enough? Play some of the, with those things now that we have some extra time at home. Yes, and I that's, that's a great advice. Play with your friends, try it out, and make sure that you're ready to go. You have good lighting, you have good background. Um, I was thinking, Betsy, you had said, uh, you know, dress, dress professionally. And we, we like to say from top down, even though it's virtual, because you're in the setting, like you're going to sit in casual pants. And if you have to stand up for some reason, you don't want them to be seeing your checkered uh, PJ bottoms or your, your Under Armour sweatpants. And so top down, just in case, just in case something happens. Yeah, they might ask you to stand up in the interview and say, you know, part of your job is going to be to give presentations to clients virtually. So please back up so I can see what you look like. And so if you're backing up and you're wearing, you know, your PGs, it's not going to be a good idea. So dress the part. I think oftentimes that's how you feel great about yourself. It's like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to attack this. Let's do it. Yes. Wear your lucky earrings, whatever you have to do. Yes. Um, okay. Those are all my questions. Are there any more questions on the chat? Before Ms. Betsy, remember, she's on the other side of the table. So if you have an experience and you don't know how to overcome it, she's the person you can ask. Uh, let's, I'm just going to wait and see if anybody else has any, has any more questions. So the only other thing I want to mention, Gabby, is that for some of our students, I know that we have, you mentioned the work at UTEP Job Fair coming up yes. and Career Expo coming up. So all, our staff is available to sit with you and do virtual mock interviews through Teams or using teams to do the, the, the mock interviews. So, you know, just email us at careers.utep.edu. Give us a couple of timeframes when you're available, and we'll definitely schedule a time for you to uh, just practice that interview. We'll give you feedback. We'll actually ask you uh, questions related to the job. So we want to make sure you get it all done. Oh, I have another great question. Thank you, Betsy. That's very true. We're here for you. We're here for you. We are open. So email us, and we'll set something up with your liaison or your PCA. We have a question. What if a recruiter asks an uncomfortable question as if I'm married or have kids? What do they ask those kind of questions? So remember, regardless of we're live or virtual, those questions, or there are some questions, and they're noted on our website, there are illegal questions. They cannot ask, what are your child care arrangements? They cannot ask, how old are you? That is against the law. And so you still, what I tell students is don't give the answer, because I know some of some of you might say, well, I don't mind them asking how old I am. I'm, you know, I'm 21. But remember, you don't know the biases of the person that's interviewing you. So they might think, God, that candidate is great, but they're too young. They're only 21. I'm going to pick someone that's a little bit more seasoned, and I'm going to pick the 22-year-old, right? And so sometimes don't give out that information, but simply be really kind and say, you know, help me understand how does that question pertain to the job I have to do, right? So turn it back on them and ask them, um, you know, and they might come back and say, oh, you have to do after hours work. You can simply say, not a problem. I'll be more than happy to do that. My personal life um, will not interfere with my work. Oh, fantastic. See, write those down. Those are great tips. And we have some, again, we have some examples in, um, you can research what questions we're actually putting resources up as to what questions they're not supposed to be asking and how to avoid those questions on our website. That's great. So we have another question. How do we approach an interview with no work experience or on our resume? So no work experience. So, so remember experience comes in many ways. So let's say you've never actually, you know, gone to a job, but you're volunteering in school. Maybe you are, you just finished high school and you actually were on some kind of athletic club 
or maybe you were part of, you know, student council. So again, think of different ways that you've kind of gotten some of that experience that'll help you. I've known students who say, my job is to go help take care of my grandfather because he was ill. So I, you know, we got to tease that out. So what did you have to do? And so they walked me, you know, we walked that student through all the things that they had to do just to take care of their grand grandpa. And that's good experience because that tells me that person's responsible. That person knows how to, you know, do a lot of things that I would want someone to, to do in my workplace. And picking up that responsibility isn't, that shows responsibility. That's, 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 those are huge soft skills that people don't really think about until you really tease that out. So that's fantastic. Group projects as well that you're part of, especially if you were a leader and you said, I took the reins on it because um, uh, I wanted to make sure my, my team was successful. So those are all great experiences you can talk about. It's, a lot of our, our pool are students. And so group experience. Uh, we have our student organizations, the SCLC is still having organization meetings. We still have things and clubs going on in our campus. So make sure you start getting involved as well. So you can add that into your experience. Very um, much so. What's the best way to answer the weakness question? Okay, so we all have a weakness. It's not staring at Instagram 24-7. <laughs> Do not mention anything personal, right? So, you, you know, so first let me say that. Don't talk about anything personal that your mom or your significant other tells you that's a weakness, okay? Focus on work. And we all have a a weakness related to the work, right? So mention what that is. I know a lot of students say, I'm a perfectionist, but how is that a problem? So even if that is your problem, talk about how that's a problem. And the second part to that is, how are you working on that problem, right? So another example, because I work a lot with engineering students, and so they'll say, well, I'm shy. And I say, okay, how is that a problem? Well, it takes me a little while to get to know people and to just be myself. So then we work on that response to say, okay, when they ask you that question, you could say, well, I can be a little bit reserved. Don't use the word shy. I can, I'm a little bit reserved. Um, but once I get to know folks, I'm able to interact better and work in teams a little bit better. So I've actually identified that as a problem and I've joined an organization to kind of get me out of that comfort zone. Um, I know other people do even Toastmasters or they're, you know, they're part of different things so they can work on that shyness piece of it, right? So talk about what it is and what you've done to work on that problem. Okay, so that's a successful way of answering the weakness question. Okay, right. uh, El Paso Renz asks, how about tech issues like no video on a virtual interview? Big challenge, right? So the thing I can say, um, so there's chat-based interviews sometimes. So what I would tell you ahead of time Type out responses on a Word document before the interview happens for, so for some common interview questions so that if it's chat-based, you can quickly just copy and paste your response that you've thoughtfully thought of and you took care of all the misspelled words and you cut and paste it onto the actual response time, right? Sometimes the interview could be via phone. I tell people if it's only via phone, still dress up, still give yourself plenty of quiet time, settle in. If you can, put a mirror in front of you so you feel like you're actually talking to somebody, right? So little tips like that that can help you to smile. Even though they can't see you, that energy does come across through on the phone. And employers understand that right now we're going through some, you know, difficult times and students, not everybody has a camera, not everybody has the ability to do virtual. So they're very willing to work through the phone, through chat. And uh, once you get that interview, you can let them know, hi, I would prefer this kind of, um, you know, this is the only way I can do it. Just let them know ahead of time. They're not going to say, oh, just chat. No, no. They're going to work with you as well because we, everybody's in this, um, you know, new world kind of phase. So, right. And give them your cell phone or, or make sure you ask them, is there a number I can call in in case the, the, my Wi-Fi goes down that I can quickly call you all? Um, know that they have your number, but it's kind of great for you to, when you're setting up your appointment to say, okay, what time, what date, how long will the interview last? Because you might be sitting in front of a screen for two hours and you didn't even plan it, right? Um, so even ask them, okay, if I, if I, my Wi-Fi goes down, what number can I call to get back on, on the interview? Perfect. All right, those are really good questions. Are there any more questions? Again, we have somebody who has done virtual and in-person interviews. Uh, she's done many and she has a lot of experience from the other side of the table that you may want to ask. An employer, what are some things, any tendencies that you get nervous about? This is the person to ask. 
the last thing I want to mention, Gabby, as we wrap up, um, so you all can um, follow me on my uh, LinkedIn account. Um, I don't use my Instagram all that much, but I do use my LinkedIn account. And you could just Google Betsy Castro Duarte. And I encourage all the UTEP students who are on this call to connect with me, but not only just connect with me, use some of the connections that I already have with a lot of UTEP graduates. So I know, for example, if you're thinking of going to law school, one of my connections just messaged me yesterday to say, hey, I got a full ride to law school. I'm starting in the fall. And what better way, if there's somebody on the call here that's thinking about wanting to go to law school, connect with Lily, um, Corey, who's the person that's going to be going to law school this fall. Yes, that's great. LinkedIn, make connections, email Ms. Betsy and say, or message her and say, hi, I was on the Instagram career closet, I mean, career closet, career cafe. I would like to connect with you to talk to you and maybe you can help me out. Yes, connect with Ms. Betsy. She really wants, she's, she's one of the best. She wants to help you out. So that yeah. seems like everything. We're going to do one last, oh, I have a question. How do we handle situations concerning certain work requirements that are not uh, experts, like Excel and Illustrator? Il yeah, Illustrator, MS Illustrator. So what I would recommend that you do is set aside one afternoon, sit in front of your phone or your laptop, tell your parents, your brother, your sisters, your roommates, your abuelita, I'm going to watch some videos on Excel so that you can pick up some tips, right? You can also check out the UTEP library. Um, I know they usually offer trainings for students free. So sign up so, for some of those trainings that they're offering so that you can really kind of develop that skill set, right? So that's what I would say. That's what I do when I don't know something. I'll YouTube it and I'll try to figure out exactly how can I fake it until I make it. And then once I can fake it, I can learn new tips and watch more videos and pick it up that way. And there are, if you Google free uh, courses on Excel, you could sign up for free courses all over the internet. I know a lot of students are like, oh, don't tell me anymore about building myself better. It works and it really helps. So look for free um, courses as well. So this coming, we're working with LinkedIn. So there's a whole LinkedIn learning community. Um, there is a fee right now, but I'm working on pretty much in the next few days, we're going to get a contract for UTEP so that UTEP students can get LinkedIn learning for free as well. So stay tuned to that. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Excited. Yeah. Uh, so before Ms. Betsy leaves, some more save the dates. Again, September 2nd is work at UTEP for where our employers, uh, even the Career Center, we're looking for students to hire uh, that are UTEP students. Then we have September 4th through the 11th is a virtual open house via social media. And then lastly, the biggest event of the fall semester is the Career Expo. So we're going to have companies from around the nation and around El Paso coming to look to hire our students. If you're not ready to get the job, network, get, you know, go into those chats and meet the, the recruiters, connect with them on LinkedIn. And now you have somebody to talk to and say, hey, you know, I want to work for you in the future. What do you recommend I work on before I go into your, your company? Networking. Yeah, a lot of those people are going to be UTEP grads, so I'm going to ask them to wear a UTEP pick or something that's UTEP related because a lot of UTEP grads want to help them fellow minors. Yes. So come on, folks. We've got a lot of alumni ready to help you, so you've got to connect. All right. So, again, one more cheers. Thank you so much, Ms. Betsy, for joining us. And thank you for all your questions. We'll see you guys next week, next Thursday at 10 a.m. And have a great day and go Miners. Go Miners. Bye. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye now.